Hello and welcome to version 0.0.0.9 of Nuclear Craft, a little uh, spotlight almost. Um, again, this is recorded straight after 0.0.0.8, um, and again, I'm actually using 1.1.1.2, so there's uh, 0.0.1.2, so there's going to be a couple things that um, you haven't seen before, uh, if you've been watching all the videos. Uh, but basically, we're going to start with this. Um, plutonium ore was added, and basically, uh, you can get little pieces of uh, small lumps of plutonium-239. This can be used to make large lumps of plutonium-239. It's pretty semi-rare ore in the nether. It's definitely rarer than the quartz. Um, but plutonium-239 is obviously a way to get plutonium fuel, which can uh, sort of catapult you straight into the um, all the things with, uh, with fusion reactors and, and all that all that crazy stuff, uh, which we're going to have a look at today. Uh, so that could be made into depleted, and you know that makes a bunch of other stuff. So we'll have a look at that today. Um, we've already had a look at the, f uh, the fission reactor, uh, but it's changed a little bit since last time. Now, I actually originally made the 0.0.0.7 spotlight on 0.0.0.9, um, but I don't think I covered it very well. So I'm basically just going to go through it again um, and explain more about how the, the sort of fuels work. Um, so, yes, I am first of all going to just show you a few things that were also added. Um, First of all, is uh, we have to go into the nuclear workspace for this. Um, first of all, there was uh, these things called uh, um, what are they called now? We'll see in a minute. Uh, horizontal reinforced tubing, or uh, instead of that, you could also have vertical reinforced tubing. Now, these can actually be alternated between uh, through just crafting, uh, so they cost exactly the same amount. And they can basically just be used to decorate stuff. So they can just be used as decoration blocks. And you usually see in the pictures that I post of uh, fission reactors, these blocks around the edges, they don't actually need to be there. That's just for decoration. Uh, sometimes people think that they are necessary, but they're not. As long as the, uh, the fission reactor is sealed, then it is fine. These are just for decoration. Um, what we also need is uh, some uh, react upgrades, which are added uh, in 0.0.0.9. Uh, so what we need to do is, first of all, uh, get some basic plating, tough alloy ingots, and some redstone. Make some reinforced plating. I think they were called advanced plating uh, before. Surround them with redstone, and you get four reactor upgrades. Now, a single reactor can actually have up to eight upgrades, um, but we're going to just uh, go up to four because it gets pretty um, self-explanatory after a certain point. Um, we also need a fission controller. I forgot about that. Um, so, uh, cell 47. I'm just showing all the different cells. So. Uh, what do we need to do? So first of all, obviously, we're going to go into creative mode so we don't have to bother with getting loads and loads of stuff from NEI. Um, all the recipes for these are in the heavy-duty workspace using different plates and you know different sorts of things. Recipes have changed a couple of times, um, especially this one. This used to use buckets, but that was an incredibly infuriating recipe because buckets are annoying because you have to keep filling them up. Um, and then, you know, everything else just used, you know, basic plates and the, and the, the tough alloy ingots. Um, so the first type of reactor uh, that was added in 0.0.0.7 had to be, specifically, a 3x3x3 three by three by three reactor. You had to have 3x3x3 three by three by three on the inside. That has now changed, and the default size is actually now um, a 1x1x1 one by one by one reactor. So this is really the minimal uh, stuff you actually need for... Um, a one by one by one reactor. You need this uh, cell compartment in the center here. You always need them in the center. And that is effectively your one by one by one reactor. The entire reactor is sealed, and you've got your fission controller at the bottom here. And there we go, one by one by one reactor. If it's not complete, then it will say casing incomplete. So you want to have make sure that it's done. It will tell you if you've done something wrong so that you're not sort of confused about why it's not working. Um, now, the functionality of this has actually changed. Um, as of the latest uh, version, which is going to come out soon, 0.1.1.3. Um, the first thing that's changed is that in the original versions of the fission reactor, which I'm showing you here, um, the reactor needs to be turned on with a lever to get it going. That's actually been reversed now, so that you need, to, uh, you need a lever to turn it off. Um, so not a big change there. Um, what else has changed? A, th a couple of other things. Oh yes, another thing that's changed, you're about to see in a minute, is a, a flaw with the 1x1x1 one by one by one reactor, which has been fixed. Um, you're, about, you're about to see that in a second. So, in the world, there's two things that you usually get uh, first off. Um, obviously there's plutonium that you can get from the nether, but that's usually quite hard to find, so you normally want to start with either uranium 
or thorium base power. Um, if you go with thorium, then your only option is TBU fuel cells. Uh, TBU fuel cells are used with TB, TBU fuel, which comes from thorium-232, which is made in the isotope separator or thermal centrifuge if you have industrial craft. Um, and you just get it from thorium dust, which comes from the ore. Um, so that's TBU fuel cells. In a one by one reactor, um, this stuff uh, can, there's actually a little page here for each type of, uh, of fuel. Um, so it's nuclear fuel, the base power, which is basically the power it produces in a, uh, a fission reactor, one by one by one fission reactor is here, 160 RF per tick. We'll see in a minute if that's actually correct, because I seem to remember, uh, I seem to remember that there was an issue with this being wrong, but we'll see in a minute. Um, the lifetime is 2,400 seconds, so I think that's 40 minutes. Yes, it is 40 minutes. So TBU cells last for a very long time, um, but relative to other fuel cells, they don't produce as much. But this is still quite a lot of power. Um, in fact, I think in this version, 0.0.1.2, uh, the fission re uh, reactor is a little bit overpowered, and this has been lowered. Um, so this is definitely lower, because uh, I immediately look at this and see that it's overpowered. So uh, that has been nerfed. Uh, base heat is 4 heat per tick, which is basically just the amount of heat that it produces every tick in a 1x1x1. One by one by one. And the base total energy that you get per cell is uh, 6 mega RF, or 6,000 kilo RF. Um, the value, this is, these are obviously the values for a 1x1x1 one by one by one reactor down here. And you have to multiply the base power, base heat, and base energy by 2 if you've got a 3x3x3 three by three by three reactor. 3 for a 5x5x5, five by five by five, and 4 by, by a 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. So for example, if you have a 5x5x5 five by five by five reactor, then the actual uh, base power will be 480, and the base heat will be 12. So there we go. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. The lifetime won't change, uh, so that's an important thing to note. So there we go. That is uh, the basics of the TBU fuel cell. Uh, the uh, uranium fuel cells are a little bit more advanced, so we'll stick with the thorium for now. Thorium's the most basic. Just stick your cell in there and it will start going. It looks like in this version it's been changed uh, so that um, it doesn't need the lever. Uh, so that's in 0.0.1.2 or later. So as you can see, um, this thing is starting to build up heat, starting to build up RF, and it's starting to lower its fuel. So this is the, uh, the energy bar, the heat bar, and the uh, fuel bar. So this is lowering, this is increasing, and this is going up as well, but it's going up very, very slowly. Uh, once it reaches maximum heat, it will explode, so you definitely want to stop this heat from going away. The floor with the 1x1x1 one 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 fission reactor in this version and previously is that obviously there's no space in there for any coolant cells or water. Uh, so this thing will always build up heat no matter what, and even if you turn it off with a lever, the heat will stay in there. Um, as of the latest version, the latest non-public version, um, the 1x1x1 one by one by one reactor actually has an internal cooling system of 4. So it cancels out the, uh, the thorium cells. So basically the best fuel to use in the, uh, or the most safe uh, fuel to use in this is the thorium cell uh, because it cre creates no heat. Um, so there we go. That's, that's pretty much it. You can connect cables to it. I'll get a few cables. Um, universal cable I'll get from, uh, from, from, my, from my, the good old mechanism mod. Uh, you can just connect this up to a uh, energy cell, like a resonant energy cell. Uh, it's the thing I usually use from thermal expansion. So that will start filling up as you can see. So yeah, power just flows, you know, just as any other generator into the cell. So there we go, that's the one by one by one reactor. Uh, now, let's break this now. Now you will see that um, if we place a reactor upgrade in here, it will suddenly say the casing is incomplete. That's because we've upgraded the size of the reactor, or at least the size that it's searching for. So what we want to do is actually now increase it to a, th oh, no, place the wrong thing. I want to increase it to a 3x3x3 three by three by three reactor. So here we go, it's pretty much exactly the same as the, um, the, the last time, but it's just increased in size. And effectively every single uh, reactor upgrade you add, uh, the size just goes up by one, so you just increase the radius by one, so therefore the diameter increases by two every single time. So you want to have these uh, reactor, uh, these fuel cell compartments going up like that. Uh, these blocks won't spawn mobs on them, so don't be worried about lighting up the inside. Uh, mobs won't spawn on these reactor casing blocks. So now you can see we've got a 3x3x3 three by three by three reactor in the same way. If something's missing, casing incomplete there, um, it will tell you if the fuel cell compartment's missing, it will say fuel rod incomplete. So some, I easily forget this fuel rod 
Uh, so that's useful to know that that's missing. Um, one important thing to note is that if you try to use multiple fission controllers around the same multi-block, it will say multiple controllers and not work. So you can't just sort of cheat and use one structure for four different fission, fission controllers. Um, so as we saw uh, earlier, if we put in a thorium cell, um, a TBU cell, then hopefully we will see that the heat has doubled and the power has doubled. So yes, that seems to have happened. So the power has gone up to 320 and the heat has gone up to 8. So we're getting some more power. Now of course, um, now that we have a bit of space inside the reactor, um, the reactor turns off automatically if uh, the shell is broken, we can see now that we've actually got a bit of space to put some stuff.